Hi, it's Joe. I've got to think a pretty quick one for you here today. About a month or so ago, I put out a YouTube short showing how to, I was using the XY pad as like a theremin or a ribbon controller, kind of like this. So today I just wanted to show you how to set this up. Let's get into it. Now, I do want to mention that this is just kind of a bit of a hack, right? Um, it's something that I'm doing with the macros to make the force behave in a way that I don't think Akai necessarily intended it to. And the reason I say that is that um, you may have to fuss with this a little bit to get the sound to your liking, but um, it actually you can get some pretty good results out of it. So for starters, I've just got one track on here and I've got tube synth and you need to pick a synth that is going to work well with this. And tube synth is one of them. Um, I think the first one I actually did with OpX4. Um, so basically you want something where you have um, control over the pitch of the oscillator. And um, like hype doesn't really work that well with it because it's a macro synth, but some of the other synths may work pretty well. I would actually just start with tube synth on an init patch. It sounds like this. Cool, so the first thing we have to do is to set up um, a note sustain for this. And I did this in another video, which I'll link above if you want a little bit more detail on it. But essentially we're just going to create a MIDI track here. And what I'll do is come over and edit my knobs. And I'm gonna put these knobs into project two mode. And I'm gonna add an assignment here for this MIDI track. And I'll scroll all the way down to MIDI CC64, which is sustain. So I've got this here now. And I want to set this to a toggle. And I want to send this MIDI track over to tube synth, which is plugin one. And that's it. So now essentially if I come back over here to track one and I play a note and I touch that button, that note just sustains indefinitely. So that's the first step. The next step, if we come back over to the XY pad, I essentially want to set this up so that if I touch this XY pad, the note's going to come on, and if I release my finger, the note is going to go off. So first I'm going to come over to the Y axis values, and I'm just going to go ahead and click the Learn button here, and I'll come back over to Tube Synth and go to the Setup tab, and I'm just going to change this level control here. So now if we come back to Edit Knobs, um, and we go back to the XY pad on the Y axis. Um, we've got this controlling from minus infinity up to 12, which is probably pretty hot. So let's um, bring this down to where it was originally set on tube synth, which I think was around minus 3 dB or so. We maybe even can take it a little lower than that. Um, let's try there. And the other thing that I want to do is I want to change this control input. So right now it's from 0 to 100%, with 0 being the very bottom of this pad and 100 being the very top, and I don't want to use that entire range. I actually just want to use just a little snippet of it here. So I'm going to bring this input max down to like 1%. So that means, you know, from zero down here at the very bottom up to 1%, it's going to adjust from minus infinity up to whatever I have that set to minus 5 dB or so. So while I have my note latch on here, so, When I'm all the way down at the bottom, it's off. As soon as I come up from here just a little bit, it's going to be kind of at max volume. So the other thing I want to do to make this work right is I'm going to press this momentary button and the momentary I want to set to go to minimum. So that means whenever I release this, it's actually going to shoot all the way down to the bottom to the minimum and it's going to turn that note off. So let's check out how that works. I'll put on my note hold. So that gives us kind of our note on note off effect. The next thing I want to do is set up the horizontal axis, the X axis, to be the pitch control. So let's learn that as well. Um, first I want to come back over here to tube synth and just set tube synth up a little bit. And I've got a couple options here. Um, I could either set this oscillator to be wide, and that's going to give me a huge range on this fi on fine control here. It's going to be like, um, I don't know, 12 octaves or, or something. So that's probably what I'll do. Uh, the other option I would have would be to set this to um, something else, and then this fine control is going to go up to like 12 semitones and down semi 12 semitones. That would allow me to use the second oscillator the same way if I wanted to. But I'm just going to use one oscillator right now. Uh, I'll go ahead and center this back up. 
and we'll set this on um, wide range just so you can kind of see what that what that looks like. Okay, so let's come back over here and edit these knobs again back on the XY pad. I want to make sure I'm on the X axis and let's hit learn. I'll come back over to tube synth and I just want to learn this fine control here. So if I come back here, now this should be set to. So that's working. The, if I come back to tube synth, I'm gonna go into my mixer and I'll just turn that second oscillator off so that we don't hear it anymore. So that range is obviously way too big, right? So we can adjust that here. Um, I'm gonna set this parameter to like, um, Minus 12, I'll go over it by just a little bit since it won't let it hit me, uh, won't let me hit it exactly. I'll do this one at minus 12. And we'll do the top end of the range at um, plus 12-ish. Just get as close to that as I can, holding down my shift key while adjusting this knob. It looks like it'll be 1205. So now if I go full screen with this, that makes the range something more reasonable. So that's basically the setup. Um, one problem that you're gonna have with this though is that you're never gonna be able to hit this on the pitches, right? Because it's just got such a broad range of uh, values in between there, so. So that's pretty tough. So what I'm gonna do to compensate for that is to come into the mixer and go to effects and I'm gonna add a vocal effect here, the air vocal tuner. And you can see when I come in here, we're set up for a particular scale, C, in this case, C major. Um, and the retune time is pretty fast here. This is set up out of the gate for like um, auto-tuned or hard-tuned vocals. I don't want it to be quite that fast, so let's slow this thing down a little bit. I'm gonna choose a value in here, I don't know, maybe three to 400 millisecond range, and that will allow me to use this um, more like a glide, but it'll still eventually settle on the correct pitch. So if I come back here now, So that helps a lot. Um, the other things that I did in the demo, this is this is pretty much it, by the way. So the other things I think I did in the demo um, were to, I came back into the mixer and I think I actually put the vocal harmonizer on here as well, um, just to give it some more notes. So like for example, we're already set to C major here. Let me just turn these other voices on. And the other thing that I did here, um, and something you might find you like with this, is um, because these notes cut off so abruptly, we don't really have any envelope control because essentially with this, we just have our synth locked in the sustain phase of our envelopes. The envelopes aren't really in play here. So I like to put some kind of a time base effect on here, like um, either a big reverb or a big delay, or I think uh, when I did the demo, I actually used the, the granulator, um, which sounded pretty good. So we'll just do that one here now. And I don't know, let's just pick this default one and not default, but the first preset. And it looks like my sustain came off. Don't know why that happened. So you may have to fuss around with this a little bit to get something you like. You can still edit some of the synth parameters. Um, like I say, the envelopes aren't really in play anymore, but I could, you know, adjust the cutoff or something like that here, or I could set up, um, you know, an LFO to modulate some things and make it sound a little bit different. So um, a lot of things you could do to kind of sh start shaping the sound from this point forward, but you know, these are the basics.
That's all I got for today. This is Joe. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.